God be with you. Let us pray. O God, you give us your Son as the vine, apart from whom we cannot live. Nourish our life in his resurrection, that we may bear the fruit of love and know the fullness of your joy. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. Come take a seat and join me for today's children's sermon. We continue our celebration of Easter because Easter doesn't last for one day. It lasts for 50 days. So keep shouting your hallelujahs. In the gospel today, we hear Thomas ask, how do we know the way, Jesus? And Jesus tells his followers, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus is the way to God. Through Jesus, we come to Jesus in the waters of baptism. We are marked with the cross of Christ and filled with the Holy Spirit. We come to God in those waters and are filled with love. And we come to God through Jesus in the breaking of the bread and the drinking of wine every week. We share in the presence of God. We are a community bound together in love. And when we share that love, we come to God through Jesus. Say a prayer with me, friends. Heavenly Father, gracious God, we give you thanks for Jesus, who is the way, the truth, and the life, who brings us to you. Help us to share your love in this world every day. And remember, that we have been filled with the Spirit when we were washed in the waters. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The first reading is from Acts chapter 8, beginning with verse 26. An angel of the Lord said to Philip, Get up and go toward the south to the road that goes from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is a wilderness road. So he got up and went. Now there was an Ethiopian eunuch, a court official of the Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, in charge of her entire treasury. He had come to Jerusalem to worship and was returning home. Seated in his chariot, he was reading the prophet Isaiah. Then the spirit said to Philip, go over to this chariot and join it. So Philip ran up to him and heard him reading the prophet Isaiah. He said, do you understand what you are reading? He replied, how can I, unless someone me. And he invited Philip to get in and sit beside him. Now the passage of the scripture that he was reading was this. Like a sheep he was led to the slaughter, and like a lamb silent before its shearer, so he did not open his mouth. In his humiliation, justice was denied him. Who could describe his generation? For his life is taken away from the earth. The eunuch asked Philip, about whom, may I ask you, does the prophet say this, about himself or about someone else? Then Philip began to speak, and starting with this scripture, he proclaimed to him the good news about Jesus. As they were going along the road, they came to some water. And the eunuch said, Look, here is water. What is to prevent me from being baptized? He commanded the chariot to stop, and both of them, Philip and the eunuch, went down into the water, and Philip baptized him. When they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord snatched Philip away. The eunuch saw him no more, and went on his way rejoicing. But Philip found himself at Azotus, and as he was passing through the region, he proclaimed the good news to all the towns until he came to Caesarea. Word of God, word of life, thanks be to God. The second reading is from 1 John chapter 4, starting with the seventh verse. Beloved, let us love one another, because love is from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. God's love was revealed among us in this way. God sent his only son into the world so that we might live through him. In this is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Beloved, since God loved us so much, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. 
if we love one another, God lives in us, and his love is perfected in us. By this we know that we abide in him, and he in us, because he has given us of his spirit. And we have seen and do testify that the Father has sent his Son as the Savior of the world. God abides in those who confess that Jesus is the Son of God, and they abide in God. So we have known and believe the love that God has for us. God is love, and those who abide in love abide in God, and God abides in them. Love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness on the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. For fear has to do with punishment, and whoever fears has not reached perfection in love. We love because he first loved us. Those who say, I love God, and hate their brothers or sisters, are liars. For those who do not love a brother or sister whom they have seen, cannot love God whom they have not seen. The commandment we have from him is this, those who love God must love their brothers and sisters also. We know love by this, that Jesus Christ laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for one another. Word of God, word of life, thanks be to God. According to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the words that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine. You are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit. Because apart from me, you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified in this, that you bear much fruit, and become my disciples. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you. a bit of a science experiment, one I remember from my elementary school days. The experiment is this. We put a stalk of celery into a cup of blue water, and then I let it sit overnight, and as you go day by day, you can watch the celery do its work, and the color of the water travels up the stalk. What happens is it goes up the stalk through the tubulars. I'm not a very sciencey person, friends, bear with me. And what comes out is that you can see it in the leaves. These leaves are tinted 
a bit blue. As days go on, it will become more and more and more blue. This is what happens for all plants. This is how plants work. They pull water through their roots, up through their stalks, and into their leaves or into their flowers. It happens, as I said, with flowers. If you've seen in the grocery store those very vibrantly odd-colored flowers, it's because they've done this process. They put them into colored water, and they waited for that color to be seeped up, brought up through the flower and out into its petals. It happens that way with vines, too. The vines are connected. The branches are connected to the vine, and the vine is connected to the root, and the water falls into the earth, and the roots soak it up, and it goes up the vine and out into the branches and into the very fruit that we enjoy. It's why pears or plums or peaches are so juicy, because they're filled with that water that has steeped up and come up through them. I am the vine, Jesus says, and you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit, because apart from me you can do nothing. And then in our second reading this day from the book of 1 John, we read that God is love. And those who abide in love abide in God, and God abides in them. Jesus is the vine, and we are the branches. We abide in the vine. We abide in Jesus. We are steeped in, rooted deep, abiding in the love of God. We're connected to the one that God so loved as to give us God's only Son, the one from whom we learn to love. And as we live in that love, we soak it up. We take it into our very beings, and then we can send it out into the world. As I've been thinking about this this week, an image came to my mind. It was the image of if we had taken up that big baptismal font, the bowl that we have, and we put it down here, which I'm not going to do because it's kind of heavy. But anyway, imagine it's right here, and imagine we take off our shoes and we climb into it. And that's what it is like for us to live abiding in God's love. We root ourselves into it, and we carry it up and into our beings, and into our arms, and into our hands, and out into the work and the love that we share in the world. We are salary stocks rooted in the love of God. We soak up the love that flows over us in the gift of baptism. And that's our work to do in the world, to abide in God, and bear the fruit of God's love into the world. One time I went to a Catholic wedding, and some friends of mine were getting married, and the priest said in the homily, we look forward to celebrating the fruits of your love in nine months. The implication, of course, in that situation was that the fruit of their love would be a baby. What I'm talking about when I talk about the fruits of our love are not babies. It's the work that we do in the world. It's the justice we do in the world. The fruits of healing and peace and love and justice for all the world. The fruits of the spirit, love and joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, and self-control. It's the fruits of service, kindness, caring, the quality. These are some of the fruits of love in us that travels through us, transforms us, and 
flows out to the world. Mother Teresa said that love is a fruit in season at all times and within reach of every hand. Anyone may gather it and no limit is set. Love, my friends, is always in season. You know, we're in the season of spring around here, and I've been surprised living through this season of spring. This is my first spring in Santa Monica, California. And you know, it's a different kind of spring than what I'm used to in the Midwest. There it's brown and plants are dead and snow is on top of them for many months of the year. And then all of a sudden in a quite dramatic way, it's spring, and there are plants flowering everywhere, but here in Santa Monica, it stays green for all of time. And so you have to pay attention to notice spring. But I've been paying attention. I was driving somewhere, and I realized that there's purple buds on a tree in the median of a street. And what happens often lately is I'm walking by something and I catch a scent of something delightful. And I sniff around until I can figure out what plant it is that is giving off that beautiful scent from their flowers. And the other thing I've done is I've seen plants around on a walk with my dog and I took a picture of this specific plant that I loved, and I brought it to the garden center so I could ask what plant this was that was blooming these beautiful purple flowers into the world. Spring is happening all around us. We are watching it come to be, but here in Santa Monica, you have to pay attention a little bit more to sense that change in season, or at least that's my experience. And I've come to wonder what it would be like if we went on that same kind of hunt for the fruits of love in our own lives. I wonder where we would find the tangible fruits of God's love in the world. And I wonder what those fruits would look like. I wonder what they smell like. I wonder what they feel like. Maybe even what they taste like. How can we pay attention and celebrate in each day God's love being born into the world, the fruit of God's love brought to our neighbors? How can we recognize that we are connected to the vine, and because of that connection, we are producing the fruit of love in our lives? At the same time, our neighbor is also producing the fruit of love in their lives, and we are working to feed the whole community, the whole world, with love. In fact, let's do that right now. Let's take a moment to look for love, to celebrate love, to delight in the fruits of love God is bringing forth in the world. To do that, I'm going to invite you to close your eyes or soften your gaze. Take a deep breath. And as you let it out, let out all that you're holding and carrying and worried about or wondering about. And root your feet down in the earth. Feel the ground below you. Consider the ground to be the place where you are rooted in God's love, connected to the waters of love and life. And then feel that love and life flow up through your body, all the way up. It's reached your heart space by now. And then feel it flow into your arms and 
into the tip top of your head and out into your very fingertips. And then as you're feeling that love, consider your life. Consider this past day, maybe just the past 24 hours, or consider this past week if you need a larger time. And let images of that time come to your head as if they were in a montage, in a movie. And look with God's help for the fruits of love in the last day or the last some time quietly celebrating and giving thanks for that love. And then look at the work of your own hands. And ask God to help you notice where the fruit of love is being born into the world through God's work. God for that fruit. And then consider the fruit of love God is calling forth from you right now that's still in formation, still not yet ready to be born into the world, but it's coming, that's forming, that you're soaking up God's love evermore to with God, tending to the hat as it grows. I wonder where God's love was found in your last day or your last week. I wonder where the fruit of God's love is being born into the world in the midst of your life. Because friends, this is the truth. Jesus is the vine, and we are the branches. Friends, Jesus is the colored water, and we are the celery stalks. Our work, our call, the gift of our lives, abiding in the love of Christ is the work of soaking up that love and letting it flow through us out into the world so that we can bear the fruit of God's love. God, be at work in us. God, give us the courage. God, 
believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Rejoicing that Jesus is risen and love have triumphed over fear, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need of good news. We pray for the church around the world, for all ministries, for the mission of the gospel. Keep all the newly baptized and confirmed in your care. Cleanse our hearts with your word and help us abide in you always. God of grace, hear our prayer. For the well-being of the earth and all things created, for rivers and lakes, streams and estuaries, melting glaciers and polluted waters, the Pacific Ocean and Bologna Creek. Renew the face of the earth and shower us with your goodness. God of grace, hear our prayer. For the nations and all those in authority, for local, state and national leaders, for elected representatives at every level, and for the international organizations, that peace and justice may reign. God of grace, hear our prayer. For all those in need, for any experiencing homelessness or unemployment, for those fleeing from oppression or seeking asylum, and for all who are ill or suffering, especially those we name aloud or in our hearts. God of grace, hear our prayer. For this congregation, for the caring ministries of this faith community, for all who visit and minister to one another, for all who communication to homes and care centers, and for all who seek to share the love of the world, God of grace, hear our prayer. With thanksgiving for the saints who rest from their labors, help us, like them, to bear much fruit and to become your disciples. And at the last, bring us to the heavenly banquet where we all may feast together at your table. God of grace, hear our prayer.
proclaiming freedom from captivity, becoming the song of your people. For your word of life, O oh God, we give you thanks and praise. Your word is made flesh among us. With Mary in the garden, you call us by name. With Thomas beholding your wounds, you call us to believe. With sheep of other folds, we are gathered by your voice. Your word names our death and our life. A seed that falls into the earth and dies. Rain and snow that come down from heaven to water the earth. A vine in which we abide. Through your word you appoint us to bear fruit. Fruit that will last. For your word of life, O oh God, we give you thanks and praise. By your living word we are witnesses of these things. Breathe into us your Holy Spirit. Open our minds to understand the scriptures. Give us wisdom to declare what we have heard, what we have seen with our eyes, what we have looked at and touched with our hands concerning the word of life. Fill us with strength to love not in word or speech alone, but in truth and action. With every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and in the sea and all that is in them, we join in the hymn of all creation as we thank you, O God, for your life-giving word. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. The God of resurrection power, the Christ of unending joy, the spirit of Easter hope, bless you now and always. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia. Go into the world rejoicing in the power of the risen Christ. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. I love to tell the story of unseen things above, of Jesus and his glory, of Jesus and his love. I love to tell the story because I know it's true will satisfy my longing like nothing else can do. I love to tell the story will be my theme in glory to tell the old, old story of Jesus and his love. I love to tell the story, how pleasant to repeat what seems each time I tell it, more wonderfully sweet. I love to tell the story, for some have never heard the message of salvation. Through God's own holy word, I love to tell the story, will be my theme in glory, to tell the old, old story of Jesus and his love. I love to tell the story For those who know it best Seem hungering and thirsting To hear it 
it like the rest And when in themes of glory I sing the new, new song I'll sing the old, old story That I have loved so long I love to tell the story Will be my theme in glory <coughs> Excuse me <coughs> To tell the old, old story Of Jesus and his love To tell the old, old story of Jesus and his love.